Welcome again. We continue our series on David Rockstar. I hope it's been a blessing to you. This morning we're looking at warrior spirit, and we are in 1 Samuel 22, 1 through 2, and this is David when he's fleeing from Saul who wants to kill David. David left there and escaped the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and all his father's house heard of it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, and he became captain over them. Those who were with him numbered about 400. And then the second reading is from Psalm 91, actually is Psalm 91, and it's called the Soldier's Psalm and uh, imprinted in many soldiers' uh, Bibles and also known throughout the ages. And it's also the very text of that uh, song that we just sung on Eagle's Wing, and really it's good for anyone who's facing a challenge. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra and will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds today. Well, I don't know. Any people watching the Olympics out there? Oh, man, I hope so. I know, I know we had the cloud of uh, masks, no masks, vaccines, no vaccines, you know, just all the dangers of COVID. But then when you boil it down, you've got the Olympics. You've got great competition. I hope you've tuned in to some of these amazing young athletes, and some of them even a little bit older. I hope you saw Suni Lee, who stepped up and uh, with little notice competed, got all around gold in the women's gymnastics. And uh, there was the women's volleyball team so, so close, they had to keep repeating playing it, uh, but they didn't make the goal, but they are champions. Katie Lednecki, a great swimmer, man, two golds, 800 and 1500 meter, wow, and uh, also a couple silvers thrown in there. Uh, Bobby Fink, 800 meter and the 1500 meter, just amazing closing speed. Caleb Dressel out of nowhere for five golds in swimming. Kelsey Plum, USA basketball, three by three, and, and then also the other countries. How about the Jamaican women runners. Oh my God, sweeping one, two, three. Uh, Not once, but uh, more than once. And salute to obviously uh, Japan's judo team that swept, I think it was 12 gold altogether there in judo, dominating. uh, And they're sort of uh, almost their sanctum of judo. But uh, uh, it's not just about our country, but we see all these athletes competing at a great level. And I, I think some of the reasons from ancient times, from the ancient Greeks forward, about the Olympics and competition, athletic competition as a whole, that we tune into that is because it teaches us not only something about athletic competition, but I think it teaches us something about life. And that's why we tune in. Now then, when we look at David, I think there's something similar there. Because when we think about David, one of the keys to his ascendance to power, not only is the Lord's blessing, is this warrior spirit. And I think that is part of the Olympics too. And I celebrate that because we all face some challenges. You might not be on the track and field. You might not be on the tennis courts. You might not be in the swimming pool. But by gosh, we all face some challenges in life. And for that, many times we have to summon a warrior spirit within us. So uh, with that in mind, we take a look at David's life. And I invite you to walk back into this moment in history. Uh, Saul is pursuing David because he's 
uh, not only a, a rock star for writing psalms, but also for slaying Goliath. And uh, not only that, then Saul gives him this really bad military duty, and he goes and shows himself that he's a great warrior. So Saul tries to kill him, and David flees. And he just really flees with a, sort of a small band of men. And he's near this, this cave. He writes Psalm 63, beautiful psalm there, by the way, which also is integrated into that song on eagle's wings. And there, all the malcontents and the disgruntled people uh, come to David, right? He's like this unsung hero. And, and don't you love an underdog? Man, if there's anything better than I love the winners, the uh, underdog that becomes a winner. We get some of that in the Olympics as well. So there's David, and, and uh, he's like the Mighty Ducks. Everyone ever liked the Disney movie, The Mighty Ducks out there? Man, uh, there's a new one, uh, but there's an old one. They're both good, man. The TV series is great. Or a couple of true stories, too, as well. Uh, remember the Titans? Literally, that's the name of it, right? True story, football. And then... I'm not going to get in trouble because this is Indiana. How about Hoosiers, okay? True story again about so these underdogs, man, just uh, take state basketball championship back in the, in the day. And I always want to go through there. But we, we love an underdog. So David is, is not only sort of this young man who really wasn't the person who picked to be a king, uh, shepherd in the field, but called and then uh, faces Goliath. But now he's out there in the wilderness, and everybody, these malcontents, start to come and join David. And they all sort of join into David. And I think one of the parts about David is not only sort of a warrior spirit, but he, he's willing to take action. And they know that. He's, he's a person of action, right? Does it, a lot of people talk, right? So <laughs> David is a man of action. Saul could sort of be brooding, depressed, all this stuff. David was a young man of action, and so these disgruntled malcontent folks come around David, and David sort of fashions them into a winning army, and uh, still remains one of the great heroes of the Jewish people, and also, of course, of the Christian faith as well. And so he has this, this warrior spirit within him that is just amazing, and then battle after battle after battle after battle, he begins to win and creates this momentum, not just with himself, but with all those soldiers around him. And uh, I think on the Olympics, too, there's some, some people that really have some amazing sort of uh, battle-tested kinds of things. I don't know if you felt the story of the women's basketball. First time we had three-on-three basketball, women took gold, and one, they're all great stars, but Kelsey Plum was one of the women on that team, and Kelsey Plum, if you follow the story at all, had an Achilles heel injury, and it was really severe. In fact, she was taken out of the 2020 year for the WNBA, women's basketball, and they didn't think that she, they weren't sure if she was going to play again at all, let alone go for the Olympics, but in May... Of this year, on May 15th, she went ahead and played, did okay, then qualified for the Olympics. Can you imagine? It's coming back from Achilles' heel, sort of maybe feeling tender. But uh, she was one of the leaders, certainly a a strong leader in spirit, as uh, as they went and took the gold. And her faith, she says, is one of the great things that help her fight back. She has that warrior spirit. And today, do you have that kind of warrior spirit that's willing to take action even when you face adversity and challenge and difficulty? And uh, the second thing, I think, uh, take a risk, but I think uh, also take action. And I was thinking about this, too, was Suni Lee, this young gal. First of all, Simone Biles, she'll always be GOAT, greatest of all time. I mean, she's fabulous, but we get all the pressure and stress of these young athletes, just overwhelming. So I absolutely salute her, uh, having her, her well-being in mind mentally as well as physically. And But in when she stepped down, then... Young Cindy Lee had to step up, and when she stepped up, she stepped up big, gold all around in the women's gymnastics. And you think about the willingness to take a risk, put it all on the line, and to take action. And what in your own life, what in your own life is maybe just weighing on you that you need to do some little thing that's sort of taking action? And our spiritual life is that too. We think about the contemplative side, that's very important. But there's also the action side of faith, whether it's sort of uh, putting a new Bible study plan in place and actually following through, or starting a group or being part of a group. Uh, Maybe it's some kind of active service, serving the community. Uh, I know there's some challenges around us. We want everyone to stay safe, but there's all, uh, for all of us, there's some things that we all can do to help our community to reach out there and to to make our world a better place. Even just pick up the phone, give some a call, say, hey, I'm thinking about you, I'm praying for you, I care about you, and I know you're facing some challenges uh, right now. So what is it that you can do We can take a risk and to take some action? And I think the, the third thing as we think about this is also to trust God. 
Now, I know from just this sort of preliminary thing that I said about David, you think, well, guys, you know, he's taking risks. He's a person of action. What about the trusting God kind of a thing? What's interesting, because when you look at David's life, in this moment, he has two chances where he could have killed Saul who wanted to kill him. The first is, is, is that David and his men are hiding in a cave, sort of amusing, and, and Saul goes in the cave to, we're telling him to, I'm sorry, go to the bathroom. I mean, I'm just going to say the way it is, right? And David and his men are waiting there, and they're all going like, kill him. They're whispering, go and kill him, because David's in the shadows, and David does not. Uh, and then later tells Saul, when he leaves the cave, he sort of shouts across the valley, he says, hey, you know, I had a chance to kill you, but I didn't. Next time, David's out with one of his men, and uh, I don't know, they just have sort of this bold moment, and they go into Saul's camp, and Saul's asleep. In fact, everybody's asleep. They had a tired day, whatever, and they go up to Saul, and once again, David is there next to Saul. Saul's asleep, and the soldier says, kill him, kill him, and David says, touch not the Lord's anointed. In other words, David knows his moment's going to come as king, but he's not going to force the hand. He respects Saul as the king of that moment. And so David takes Saul's spear and his water jug and then tears a piece of Saul's robe off. And then later he calls back to Saul and says, see, I could have killed you again, but I didn't. And what is it about David that lets him sort of trust God in that moment when he could have taken things in his own hand, you know, to know the difference? When do I act? When do I, when do I wait and wait on the Lord? And there's an interesting thing in 1 Samuel chapter 30 where it says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. I really like that phrase, David strengthened himself in the Lord. How did David do that? Well, we look at these Psalms. Look at Psalm 63. We're told it was David wrote that. Uh, in the cave, this tremendous uh, statement of faith there. And then this Psalm uh, 91, the soldier's psalm that David writes that has this tremendous faith in God. David was spending time in prayer. And when David was at his best, he had his moments of failure as well. We'll come to that. But when David was at his best, he spent time in prayer, strengthened himself in the Lord. And I just ask you today, what are you doing to strengthen yourself in the Lord. We're all facing some challenges. This pandemic's gone on forever, you know, one thing, another thing. It's wearisome, it's tiring. And then all the other challenges, the financial challenges of many folks, uh, illness, loss of loved ones, so many different things. Just the pressures of relationship are immense. Are you taking time to strengthen yourself in the Lord? That kind of strength can give you tremendous resilience in the face of adversity. That was one of the things that word kept coming up, uh, the word resilience with um, Fink in the, in the swimming pool uh, just yesterday, 800 meter and the 1500 meter, just grueling, grueling long events. But I'll just tell you, my favorite athlete, this Olympics, I don't love them all, Katie Lindick, she's just a huge, I'm just a huge fan of hers and um, just all the athletes. But I don't know if you followed Caleb Dressel at all, amazing young man came out of nowhere. Now, Caleb Dressel is a swimmer, and I, I love swimming too, but he, he gave up swimming for a while and uh, wasn't sure if he's ever going to swim again. Uh, still a young man, but, you know, these athletes, sometimes we just, we just burn them out. they got to compete, compete, compete at the highest level. And he just wasn't having any fun, so he, he just set it aside. And then he really dug down in his faith. And he began to see his competing as something that he loved, but also something that was sort of a witness for him in the world. And so if you notice him, he has an eagle. You just can't miss him. On the left side, by the left side, I mean, you know, from his shoulder all the way down his left arm and whole, whole side. And uh, it's this huge eagle. And he says that the reason he did that was for witness. And it's from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, which says this. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And he says that's the thing that propelled him forward in competition. And man, did he ever compete. I mean, uh, uh, five gold medals and incredible closing speed uh, set a, a world record and an Olympic record, which was uh, amazing. And it was uh, a world record, 100-meter fly, 50-meter, uh, and the 100-meter free, and the relay, one of the big closers in the relay. But he says it's uh, about his faith. Isaiah 40, 31. I hope you 
look that up today because that eagle's wing resonates through Psalm 91 of David, Psalm 63 of David and Isaiah, the great prophet in chapter 40, verse 31. That warrior spirit. What obstacle today do you have that you're facing that you need to have the warrior spirit about? Now, one of the great things about an eagle, I just want to point this out in closing, is many birds shelter in place, so to speak, uh, when there's a storm. But the eagle does not. The eagle is different. This eagle can fly above the storm. And the way the eagle does that is eagle's wings are a little bit different. They can lock their wings, and because of that, they lock their wings and they can use the storm winds to propel them up above the storm. And I think that's a good image for us, too, that our faith is really like eagle's wings, that we do, in fact, face the storms and adversity of life. God never promised we would not face heartache and heartbreak, challenge and adversity, but God always promised that God would be there for us. And I believe the challenge and adversity, the winds of the storm of life, through the wings of faith can lift us higher towards God and a higher perspective on life. Today, You may not be an Olympic athlete. I hope you're tuning in because we're cheering for not just our country, but other countries as well. Doing great out there. Beautiful to see people giving it their all and uh, having a good spirit of competition as well as fair play. And you might not be David facing a king who's trying to kill you and enemies that are trying to kill you on the other side, but having a warrior spirit. But you and I do face challenge and adversity, be it a pandemic, um, be it another illness, being the loss of a loved one financial challenges, relationship challenges. Jesus said, in this world, you will face trouble. But behold, I have overcome the world. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Whatever we face, God can help us overcome. So I challenge us, like David, to have that kind of a warrior spirit. Amen.